Hello there, welcome back to The Closet Historian. Today I want to talk to you guys about the six vintage style wardrobe essentials that I have in my closet. The six like items that I would replace first if I lost my whole wardrobe, which is how I've decided to sort of frame this question that I get a lot of the time. A lot of times people will ask me either on my blog over the years or here even on YouTube already or on Instagram, what pieces I recommend you start with when building a vintage style wardrobe. And I always have a hard time answering this question. And since someone did ask me this question again this past week, I decided that I would would try and reframe it in my mind to really answer this question once and for all because I have always had a hard time answering it and I think I really need to address it obviously because it's a question I do keep getting asked. Um, so for me I think I'm going to be framing this in a way thinking of it as if my personal wardrobe disappeared today, my vintage style retro clothes, all of them disappeared, what would I buy, replace, so add first back into my wardrobe if I had to rebuild my vintage style wardrobe from scratch. The first item on my list is going to be a black midi pencil skirt. I've just paired this one here with a graphic tee to show what it's like when you are um, like a good outfit idea for when you are transitioning your wardrobe into a vintage style wardrobe or into a more retro style. You can definitely pair your modern tops or like nerdy t-shirts, things like that with a black pencil skirt and style it a little bit more pinup or rockabilly. And I think it's a really good transitional outfit idea, transitional style when you are transitioning from one style to another, like modern wardrobe or like a more casual wardrobe into a vintage one. I think this is a really good way to fuse those two things. Of course, I prefer these to be high-waisted and then lower than the knee. That's just my personal preference for length and rise, I suppose, of the skirt. I don't know if you call it rise on a skirt. I know it is for pants, but anyway, uh, I prefer a higher-waisted pencil skirt, of course, that is much more mid-century in style and something if you can find, I think you should if you are looking to build a vintage or retro mid-century kind of styled wardrobe. This kind of style, I think, works for many decades, um, but especially like the 40s, 50s, and 60s. And then of course, a black pencil skirt can be dressed up for evening with a dressier top, dressier jewelry, things like that, or even made more like conservatively formal for daytime with something like a suit jacket, of course. So I think uh, a black pencil skirt or any solid color pencil skirt, whichever color fits your wardrobe, your style, your mood the best, um, is a really good building block for a vintage style wardrobe. Just pencil skirts uh, or straight cut. Like you don't have to be like uh, cut in like a pencil, traditional pencil skirts are usually kind of come in on the sides, but you can have ones that are more form fitted or just a straight cut. Both work, I think for most, most mid century looks. Um, I think it's uh, good to have a variety uh, once you get to the point where you're like me and you're just adding every color of the rainbow. But uh, to start with, I think a black, gray, navy, red, these are gonna be the best like base colors to build your wardrobe on top of in the future. So a black pencil skirt is gonna be my first item on my list of essentials. The second item on my list is going to be a black circle skirt. Not that different from our first item here. Of course, skirts I think are really the best building blocks for vintage style wardrobe, again, because you can just pair them with modern tops and it automatically looks a little bit more vintage. So again, that's the same sort of reasoning behind adding a black circle skirt to my wardrobe as adding a black pencil skirt. So again, adding solid colored skirts of any style really, but pencil and circle happen to be my two favorites. So adding a circle skirt, really you can make something again like a graphic tee look a lot more vintage, or again, dress it up for evening, things like that. So black circle skirt is super standard in my wardrobe. I would, I would have to replace mine immediately if something were to happen to it. The other nice thing about circle skirts too is that you can actually wear them with a petticoat as well once you invest in a petticoat if that's something a style you're interested in, if you like 1950s sort of things it just um you know you can wear them without and i think it's much more casual and obviously a little bit you know easier to get in and out of a vehicle or things like that but if you uh, want to really amp up the look if you want to go a little bit more authentic a little bit more formal you can add a petticoat to a skirt like this and it is a very fun thing to flounce around in of course the third item I would be rushing to replace would be a white or ivory blouse. This one is actually from a company in the UK called Hey Day Vintage and I just adore this blouse. It's rayon with these nice big billowy sleeves and big collar. Um, it's something that I was an investment for me but I think is a worthwhile one because something like this of course can be styled in so many different ways and is both versatile and uh, a classic just like those other two pieces I just talked about. Of course this blouse could be paired with the pencil skirt or the circle skirt that we just talked about. Also with like skirts from my suits or just um, tied with like jeans is actually a pretty cute look or tied with wide leg pants. Um, I have it here tucked into wide leg pants, pants for more of like a Catherine Hepburn-ish look. Of course, these pants aren't ideal for that look, but I was just trying to give you an idea of different ways to style a white blouse like this one. Of course, any sort of white collared shirt or white blouse is gonna be a great like filler for this category, a great item to have in your wardrobe because you can pair it with so many other things and style it, again, more casually or more formal depending on your needs. The fourth item on my list is going to be a summer sundress. This one here is just a gingham dress that I like wearing in the spring and summertime. Of course, I love gingham as well. It's practically a vintage neutral, like like polka dots. It's almost 
a uh, vintage style neutral and you can style something like this which is a gray and white gingham with yellow with white with black with navy all kinds of different colors so it's a really good versatile piece for me in my wardrobe um, so something like this would be a dress that i would love to replace were it to disappear on me again this is something that can be quite versatile in the sense you can style it with like a more casual shoe even like a flat sandal and like a straw or wicker handbag if you're just going out to you know like the farmer's market in the morning or to a vintage fair maybe a picnic something like that and then you can style this much more authentically by adding an entire accessory set so hat gloves jewelry um, shoes, all that matching is really going to give this a much more authentic look. Even like I would add a petticoat to this outfit as well to really take it over the top in like super 50s catalog, 50s housewife looking. So you can really dress these up as well and make them much more authentic if that's something you're interested in. Or you can style them much more modern, which I think is really good and versatile for people who are not sure if they really want to go head on into headfirst into vintage style or not. The next item is going to be a pretty classic for essential wardrobe lists. Uh, in general, and that's going to be a little black dress. Of course, I don't like them so little myself because I prefer a longer hemline, but this 1940s dress is the one that I would save if I had to, you know, get anything out of my wardrobe. If I had to replace my entire wardrobe, I would want to replace this exact dress. It has been such a versatile, pe versatile piece for me in my wardrobe. I've dressed it down with like straw and sort of like plastic and uh, celluloid accessories in the summertime or dressed it up with velvet or rhinestones in the fall and winter or for evening. It's just such a versatile piece in my wardrobe. Of course, a little black dress is always a great versatile item to have in your wardrobe, no matter if you wear vintage style or not. I think it's good to have one in the era of your choice, uh, if whether that's 1930s, 1920s, 19. 40s, 50s, 60s, whatever era you like, to have a little black dress from that era is going to serve you so well in your wardrobe. Being able to style it casually, formally, things like that. Pick a fabric that can be worn in multiple ways, and I think it will really serve you well in your wardrobe. Now the last item on my list of essentials where I have to rebuild my wardrobe tomorrow is going to be skirt suits, vintage suiting. I love vintage suits. Uh, this is something that if you, again, you follow my blog, my Instagram, you know about me. I love vintage suiting, especially 1940s suiting, but also 1950s suiting as well, um, or especially like where they meld together, um, because some 1940s suiting can be too power shoulder, and some 50s suiting starts getting a little bit frumpy once it gets into the 60s, so like the middle ground between 40s and 50s suiting, that's a sweet spot that I like to hang out in. This one here is a 1940s suit in gray, of course, a very classic neutral that can be broken apart, worn with the jacket separately, with, worn with other skirts. Um, that's the great thing about you know, suiting is that you can break up the suit and wear the jacket separately with other things or wear the skirt separately with other things. Of course, if you can find a vintage pantsuit, that would be also awesome. I think they're a little bit rarer. I haven't ever seen a vintage 1940s pantsuit for sale, but I mean, if you had a jacket, you could probably find pants to match. So if you had like a black vintage suit jacket or a gray vintage suit jacket, you could probably find like workwear pants that would work with that. But it'd be good to build a suit that way if you already had a vintage skirt suit to add a like wide leg trouser to that. Hmm. Now I'm getting ideas. Uh, I shouldn't be thinking out loud like this, but a vintage skirt suit is something that is an essential in my wardrobe. I have many of them, but if I were to lose my wardrobe and have to rebuild tomorrow, I would definitely want one to start with, um, either in black, navy, gray, some sort of a neutral probably, unless of course there was something, you know, spectacular in red, which is always nice, uh, but it's really hard to come upon things like that. And vintage style suiting is an investment and I understand that, but I think it's a worthwhile one, especially because pieces again, say it with me everyone, are so versatile, suits are so versatile and can be worn in so many different ways. Um, and so you just feel like chic and powerful in a suit too. And trust me, it's a, it's a very, something I wouldn't want to give up now that I know about it, you know? So those are my top six vintage style wardrobe essentials for my personal style in my wardrobe. You know, the things that I would replace were I to lose my all my clothes, what would I want to replace first? What would I want to acquire? So somehow get my hands on first. If I had to start rebuilding from scratch, do let me know what are the most essential items in your wardrobe down in the comments below. And if you guys are interested in seeing a like version of this video about accessories or like vintage style, vintage wardrobe accessory staples or like essentials for me, just let me know in the comments below and I'll see if I can slot that video into the schedule as well. But thank you as always for tuning in today and I will see you again soon. Bye.